Imagine trying to predict anything related to this hockey team. I mean anything at all. Well, one prediction I've been attempting to make all season long just might finally be playing out. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place, not coincidentally, that you found this show. Penguins 3, Flyers 1, saved their season yet again. I don't know. Whether you want to get dramatic about it or not, they did leapfrog the Panthers by a point, and thanks to the Islanders losing, they pulled within a point of the Islanders. They still have a game in hand on the Islanders. Whatever. They need to win A bunch of these games coming up, I'm convinced, in order to get in. And from there, I got nothing. They're in Newark tomorrow night. If they lost to the Devils by seven goals, you wouldn't be surprised. If they beat them by seven goals, you'd only be a little bit surprised. Thursday night, the Wild are coming in. They've had a really nice second half. Saturday, it's the Red Wings again. Same place, too, up in Detroit. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So what you're looking for, more than anything else, is a sign of legitimate stability or a sign of a potential surge even better. And that's where Brian Rust comes in for me. How many times, for those of you who listen to this regularly, have you heard me say, yeah, he's slumping, but dot, 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 once he gets hot, well, two games isn't hot. Two games of anything isn't hot, but two games of three goals and an assist in which Rust has appeared to be genuinely engaged and aggressive in the attacking zone, that does mean something. Rust's goal last night, for example, was a perfect, perfect uh, exhibit A of what you want to see from him. He started to play deep in the defensive zone. He has to be the defensive conscience of a line that has Sidney Crosby and Jake Gensel on it. With all due respect to what Sid does over all 200 feet, you don't want him doing that stuff uh, way back in that zone, and you definitely don't want Jake handling that business. So Rust starts to play and then bursts in a setting where I'm not going to have an easy time describing the entire ice surface for you here in an audio form, but it wasn't one of those uh, diagrams on the rink where you'd think to yourself, oh, yeah, here's something. But he kept going. He kept churning. He got through the Philadelphia traffic. And by the time he got to the Flyers blue line, he had kind of a beat. And Sid being Sid... Uh, Just as happened the day before in the loss to the Bruins, uh, Sid made magic happen Uh, on his backhand, getting the puck through to Rust. Rust goes in on whoever Philadelphia's goaltender is this week and beats him pretty cleanly. Nice little move, uh, chin up, authoritative finish. And then instead of celebrating as if it was the, you know, the first goal that he'd scored in 100 years, which is how he celebrated a lot of his goals this year, he just kind of skated over into the corner. He waited for Sid to come over and Sid's like freaking out. Sid's just, yeah, whatever. Okay. And, and Rust was just like, it's nothing. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what you want to see from him. No, no, no. <laughs> that's what you need to see from him. For so many reasons. Because if he gets going on one of those rust benders, and you know what I'm talking about if you've been following this team for a while, then the whole first line can take off. Uh, That buys more breathing room for the second line in turn. You can alternate him with Ricard Raquel on the first power play, depending on what kind of PK formation you're seeing from the other guys. That's something that Mike Sullivan's done over the past three games. Of course, Raquel popped a couple of pretty big goals in this one himself. And Raquel's the one with the 10 power play goals this season, so use this move judiciously. I just like seeing Rust get going. I think that's the most meaningful thing that came out of this. I know there's 
stuff that you can look at on a lot of different fronts, not least of which is that Casey DeSmith played a strong game. Did you hear my hesitation there? Why? Because what's he done? He's played a strong game. Everyone goes talking about how that's it. Give the net to Casey. You give the net to Casey and he gives up a touchdown to the Red Wings. Consistency or a surge or both. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? As it is, as Rust pointed out himself afterward, all that matters is collecting points. Um, it seems like every night there's crazy things happen. One team's gaining ground, one team's losing ground. It's uh, just one of those things that it's just a race to the finish line and whoever ends up top then is going to get in the playoffs. Those points will come a whole heck of a lot easier if 17 is looking like his old self again. When we come back, J1Q. This segment's brought to you by Family Table, a local company that brings delicious food to busy families. They offer family-style complete meals or a la carte items like lean proteins, perfect for muscle building and weight loss. If you aren't local, gift cards are also available for your Pittsburgh-based family and friends. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com and use the code DK20 for 20% off and free delivery on your first order. We're by noon today for Thursday delivery. Today's J1Q comes from Dan who says, oh boy, just when I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. I got a lot of these types of responses from people over the weekend. It's not you, okay? It's just not. And when you hear or read my commentary, and it appears to run hot or cold, it's not me either. It's the subject matter. This is who they are. This is the effect they have on people, including, I might add, themselves. I'm completely convinced of that. This team, when it feels it's got a challenge in front of it, when it feels like it's pushed, it does pretty well. It does pretty well. Now, there have been a couple of exceptions to that this season, but not many. Not many. Uh, you can look at a couple of the blowout losses the most recent one in Madison Square Garden in particular, maybe the one in Los Angeles, although I covered both of those. And, and the one in L.A., I just I thought it was one that just got away from them. They came out ready. It just didn't matter. The Kings were just flying. But overall, when they've gone up against a team that they perceive to be a threat, they rise up. They don't always get the goaltending. They don't always defend particularly well, but they rise up in terms of effort, commitment, focus, and all that other stuff that they don't have in other situations, which is the part that's really vexing and maddening about this group. And that's why there's a part of me that likes their chances against the Devils tomorrow night, who've really given them fits with the speed and their finishing ability that they've got. And against the Wild, but for different reasons, I think they're just a good matchup, uh, meaning the Wild is for the Penguins, and they've been that way for a long time. They respect the Penguins a little bit too much, and they give them too much space. That's just a Western Conference thing. But then comes Saturday, and you have no idea what you'll get. You have no idea what they're going to do in Detroit from the drop of the puck. So who's the who's the dummy in this equation? Is it you? Is it me? Is it them? I don't know. But what all I'm saying here is I wouldn't take any of this personally as to whether or not they pulled you in or tossed you out or I've had it with this team to I love this team with all my heart because that now changes over a 24-hour span just like it did over this weekend. That loss to Boston, which I haven't even talked about today, was one of those that you're like, what am I even doing here? What is the point of this? What is the point of my buying a ticket for this game or even sitting at home watching it on TV? I could have done something else. 
If all you're going to do is go out there and score a goal and then give one up a minute later and then score a goal and then give one up a minute later and then once you get to the last two minutes, make sure that you blow the point entirely and give up the winning goal in the final two minutes. We've seen it a hundred times, it feels like, this year. And we've seen it with Tristan Jari in net, it feels like 150 times, in addition to his getting apparently hurt yet again. But then the next day comes... And everyone's, oh, yeah, Casey DeSmith is the greatest. He's our guy. Ride him. (laughs) And and you're going to look ridiculous by tomorrow night. It's not you, my man. It's not. I appreciate you sending me that, and I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Penguins. Let's do another one tomorrow when we could be talking about something else entirely. 